So we want to do some more calculus on um, polar curves. Um, we're going to do some integrals related to polar curves. Suppose you have a polar curve that has the form r equals f of theta. What we're thinking is in theta r space, and r is some function of theta, that's our function f, but we interpret each pair of angle and radius um, to give us the angle, gives us the direction to face, theta gives the direction to face, and r gives the distance to walk out. So this function here converts to some, some curve over here in xy space. So if we have a starting time, so a starting angle alpha and an ending alpha angle beta, then we have kind of a little bit of a pie-shaped um, piece of area here if we count the area between the origin and the curve. And our question is, what's the area of this region over here? So I want to be able to find that, find the area of the region. Well, when we're doing a straight in integral, say from calc 1, what we did was we took the, the interval, so we had our starting angle and our ending angle, alpha and beta, and then we just partitioned it. And um, each little uh, rectangle here was basically delta theta wide, and so the area here was f of theta times delta theta, and then we just sum all those up by doing an integral. Well, by we sum all those up, we make the partition finer and finer, and that sum becomes an integral. So, well, if you think about this this piece over here in theta r space, that actually corresponds to if you if you partition theta, you're breaking this up into several little changes in angles. So you're you're really breaking it up into little wedges. So what you really have, you're adding up these little wedges. Let's, let's look at this wedge in detail. So the wedge might look something like this. So this wedge is really a triangle. Now if we assume that delta theta is pretty small, r isn't really going to have much of a chance to change. This is r. And uh, to find the area of this, we could kind of approximate it as a triangle. This would be pretty true, especially if delta theta is tiny, then this distance isn't going to be very big. Now we know that if we, if we just think about keeping the radius the same, that the distance that we're going to move is going to be r delta theta. So that's going to be the arc length, right? If you make a change in angle, then that change in angle gets multiplied by your radius, and that gives you the change in arc length. Well, if delta theta is really tiny, this arc length is going to be essentially the height of this piece. And we're just going to pretend like this piece is pretty much just a triangle. The area of a triangle is one half the base times the height of the triangle. And so the area of this wedge-shaped piece, maybe you call it delta A, just a little piece of area, is one half r squared delta theta. Or since we know that r is a function of theta, that's going to be one half f of theta squared delta theta. Now what we do is we add up all those bits of area where we have a very fine partition. We get this smooth sum from alpha to beta. We just sum up for all these little wedges. Um, one half r squared d theta. Or if you like, it, just to, so that you can see that that's actually just a function of theta. Since r is f of theta, it's one half f of theta squared d theta. So that's the formula in the text for calculating the area between um, the origin and some curve here, the area of a fan-shaped region. Okay, so this is, this is the formula that they have. The area is going to be the integral from the starting angle to the ending angle of 1 half r squared d theta. Okay, remember this is just, this is just saying that's the area differential, right? This, we got this from considering um, a little triangle and that little triangle had height that was roughly r delta theta, and it had base that was roughly r, and so the area, a little bit of area, is one-half r squared delta theta. That's approximately what it is, right? But in an infinitesimal sense, if the changes are really tiny, then the differential dA is one-half r squared d theta. That's exactly true. Let's do an example of using this formula. We've got um, this curve, r equals cosine 3 theta, and we want to find the area inside one leaf of the three-leaved rows, r equals cosine 3 theta. 
So before we do anything, we probably need to figure out um, what's alpha, right, our starting angle, and what's beta, if all we want to do is to get one leaf of this three leaf rows. So probably the first thing we need to do is to draw the graph of this function. Now, because of the three theta there, this, this cosine is going to move three times as fast as normal. So normally, it takes um, a cosine graph 2 pi to do everything, right? But if we, if we do a distance of 2 pi, this graph is going to do its whole thing um, three times. So let's see. We're going to um, let's break this up into thirds. So if we break that up into thirds, this is 2 pi thirds here. And uh, this would be 4 pi thirds. And then finally, that's 6 pi thirds. So we've broken up into three equal pieces. Now, for the cosine, let me break it up again. Let's see, that's going to be pi thirds. And this is going to be, half of that's going to be pi sixths. And um, halfway in between these two is going to be pi halves. So remember the cosine, so the cosine of 3 theta, see, it's going to be 1 and negative 1. I'm just trying to get that graph. The cosine at 0, the cosine's 1. And if we plug in pi 6, 3 times pi 6 is pi halves, so we get the cosine of pi halves, which is 0. We plug in pi thirds, 3 times pi, it, 3 times pi thirds is pi, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. At pi halves, it's really the cosine of 3 pi halves, which is also 0. And by the time we get to 2 pi, um, we have, we're back to uh, 1 again. And this pattern is just going to repeat. Oops. Pattern is just going to repeat over and over, right? So it's just going to dip down and then go again and then dip down and then go again. So you can see um, as, as we graph this, um, let's see, as we turn from 0 to pi 6, so let me put in pi 6 here, when we start out facing an angle of 0, we've got a radius of 1. Then as we turn to an angle of pi 6, the radius slowly decreases until we're at the origin. Okay, and then from pi 6 to pi thirds, so as we're turning from pi 6 to this angle, pi thirds, we actually have negative radii. So although we're looking into the first um, quadrant, we're actually walking back into the third quadrant because we have to walk backwards in this case. By the time we've turned to pi thirds, we're walking back a full step. So as we turn, our radius gradually becomes more and more negative, and it looks like this. We keep turning from pi thirds to pi halves, so we're, we're looking out into this direction, but we're taking steps backwards because our radius is negative in this range. And so we come back up until we're back at the origin at pi halves. Okay, and um, you see we've made one leaf of this three leaf row. Well, we've made one and a half leaves of this three leaf rows. So, and we could con continue going from pi halves to two pi thirds. So here's the angle, two pi thirds. While we're, while we're turning in that angle, our radius gradually increases until when we're facing two pi thirds, we have a radius one. And then from two pi thirds, Let's see, this angle is, um, well, this is happening every pi 6, right? So 4 pi 6, it should be 5 pi 6. So while we're turning to an angle of 5 pi 6, then our radius gradually goes back to 0. Okay, so let's see, this is an angle pi halfway between there, and then this is 7 pi 6. So from 5 pi 6 to pi, so here's our angle 5 pi 6 down to pi. We actually have negative radii again. That finishes off that third leaf. Well, really, all we need is to find the area of one leaf. If we just went, if we just went from here, from 0 to pi 6, that would actually be half of one of these leaves, and that would be sufficient. We could just double that to get the area. So what we need to do is the area is going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to pi 6 of 1 half r squared, but r squared would be cosine squared 3 theta 
d theta. So there's the integral we need to do. You can see the reason for the 2 here is because if we only integrate from 0 to pi 6, we just get the area of half of one of these leaves, and then we're doubling it to get the area so of, of a single leaf. So, Okay, so the integral is really the integral from 0 to pi 6 of cosine squared 3 theta d theta. Okay, the hard part is setting up the integral. Now we can evaluate the integral. Let's get a little bit more space to do that. We need, we said we need to do the integral from 0 to pi 6 of cosine squared 3 theta d theta. My 3 is a little funny looking. Cosine squared of 3 theta d theta. You remember, the trick for integrating cosine squared is to remember the power reducing identity. So, power reducing identity says that this is equal to 1 plus um, the cosine of 2 times 3 theta, that would be cosine of 6 theta, over 2 d theta. And now that integral can be broken up into two fractions. So you've got the integral from 0 to pi 6 of 1 half d theta, plus the integral from 0 to pi 6 of 1 half cosine 6 theta d theta. And now each integral can be done separately. If we want to integrate 1 half d theta, the antiderivative is 1 half theta. We have to evaluate that between 0 and pi 6. And the antiderivative of this, let's see, it's got to be some kind of sine. I'm going to take the derivative of sine 6 theta, an extra 6 comes out. So I'm going to have to have a 12th out here. I'll evaluate that between 0 and pi 6. So this first integral gives me 1 half of pi 6 minus 1 half of 0 plus the second integral gives me 1 twelfth of the sine of 6 times pi 6 would just be pi minus 1 twelfth 1 twelfth of the sine of 6 times 0 would just be 0. Now the sine of pi is actually, oh this isn't theta, this is 0. So that's 0. The sine of pi is 0 and the sine of 0 is 0. So the answer is pi twelfths. The area of one leaf of that three-leaf rose is pi twelfths.